Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we'll be taking a look at the 10th anniversary, 4th edition of the stunning Tower of the Trees by Dana O'Driscoll. So this has been a long-awaited deck for me. I did um, pre-order it, but I've been looking forward to a little bit larger edition of the Tower of the Trees for quite some time. Um, I'm not going to do like a full unboxing. I did already unwrap it. It did come in this little um, paper sleeve here, which actually is designed really pretty and looks a little bit like the Oracle deck, which we'll take a look at and do a little size comparison at the end. So to start with, it comes in this gorgeous matte box. Um, you can see it has lovely detail along the sides. We have a little bit of a description. So if you're unfamiliar with the Tower of the Trees, I'll just read this real quick. So it says the Tarot of Trees is an 80 card colorful and whimsical tarot deck that features classical tarot symbolism through the theme of trees. The deck features a seasonal approach to the minor arcana and unique interpretations of the major arcana. This is the 10th anniversary edition, which is completely redesigned from earlier editions. Enter the forest through the tarot of the trees. So I'm really interested to know if the redesign is actually just in terms of the sort of production of the deck versus I really hope there's not like a ton of changes to the cards because I, I absolutely love this deck. Let's go ahead and open it up. So as you can see here, because I already peeked, the cards are massive which actually is one of the things that I personally have been asking for um, with this deck. Like every time I bring out my little one, I'm like, oh, I love, I love this deck. Love it. But I wish the cardstock wasn't glossy and I wish the cards were a little bit bigger so that I could kind of dive a little bit deeper into the details. But oh my goodness, that's a huge difference. Um, that is a lot, a lot bigger. There's the original one that I have. So you can see it is quite a bit bigger. Um, the color tones look beautiful just right here as I'm looking at it. Um, let's go ahead and pull them out of the box. I think they are on that same cardstock that the um, that her new Oracle is on, which I do quite like. This is actually gilded and it's kind of a matte gilding. Um, but that's going to be, this is a chunky deck. This is going to be interesting to try and, and try and work with. Um, I do, I do kind of wish it was borderless because like that really would kind of been the icing on the cake. Um, but I kind of always intended because I have this one and because I know these cards so well, even though yes, it's gilded, I, I still might trim this and beans the fact that it is so large, like that gives me a little bit even more of an inclination to trim it because I can trim it down. I could take the borders and titles off and it's still going to be a really big deck. It's closer to Oracle size. Um, here is a standard tarot. This is the Green Witch. So you can see there is quite the size difference just between, um, this is a Llewellyn tarot, not the Llewellyn tarot, but a tarot deck by Llewellyn, published from Llewellyn, compared to an Oracle deck. So this is a Rockpool Oracle, which is a pretty standard Oracle size. So you can see that this deck is like even a lot bigger than an Oracle. However, if I trim it down to just the artwork, that's actually a little bit, if I can put that in there, it's a little bit closer to Oracle size. So I might, I might have to do that. One of the reasons why I really don't hesitate to do that is because I know this deck so well. <laughs> um, it's, it's gotten so much use in my home. Um, let's take a quick look at the back. I mean, that that is just stunning. I really, really like the backs of the um, Oracle deck that she's created. And I think that this these backs are just as beautiful. Um, here is the backs on the edition that I have. I don't know exactly which edition this is. I want to say it's, it's the second edition, but I could be wrong. So enough rambling. Let's take a flip through these cards, but um, I should flip through the cards as I'm rambling. I do know these images quite well, so I feel like I could, I would probably know. And so far, everything's looking the same, but the colors are so rich and vibrant and look how beautiful these images are. I really love the use of trees in this deck. This deck has no people, which is just, I think, fantastic. But we definitely get that sense of 
the trees themselves having the energy that we would normally see, you know, kind of representing those people. So see here we have the emperor, we have this really big, grand, tall tree, and it's kind of overlooking all these little trees here, right? All these little um, bushes or trees or whatever they are. So we definitely get the sense of, of someone standing over, right? Of, of this big tree kind of being the, the king, the guardian, the, the emperor. His little community is down here and he's standing guard over him. And I, I think that's really beautiful. This is one of my favorite Hierophants. I just absolutely love this tree. I love all of the little detail that um, Dana O'Driscoll has put into this artwork. All the little line work, the, the little black line work is just really one of the things that really thrills me about this deck. Beautiful lovers. I mean, they're just, they're perfect. They're intertwined, they're together, they're becoming one. It's just gorgeous. I'm gonna say that about this whole deck, so just FYI, because it is a deck I love. I do know the images, so it's not really a first impressions. It's more of a, oh look, it's really big and pretty now. Not that it wasn't pretty before, but. So I love this chariot here, because I love this idea that the tree, it's, it's solid, it's steady, it might have its leaves all blown off when the winds come in. It might shift according to what's going on, shift along with the seasons, but it's always there. It's rooted in place. That really gives the idea of, of following your path, but staying rooted in who you are. And I just, I love that. Again, I love the strength. We have the tree growing on the side of the cliff. It's beautiful. This hermit. Oh, I'm going to see that over all these cards with the little lantern. I mean, it's just, this is the the hermit embodied in, in the tree. It's just beautiful. Love this little wheel of the years. We see the seasons represented. Um, and the seasons play very predominantly in this deck in the minor arcana, which I absolutely adore because seasonal work is very important to my practice. I love this justice with, we have the one tree that's in full bloom and the other tree that's like, almost looks like it's it's dying. It's lost all its leaves. I think that's a gorgeous depiction. So for the hanged man, we have the inverted tree, which I think is really lovely. And it kind of, it took me a minute to realize when I first got this deck, and you can see it much more clearly on these larger cards, but it took me a minute to realize that the tree was actually upside down. I thought at first that this was just, you know, with the smaller artwork, this was just some, some brush down here and that the tree was, you know, just bare, bare branches. And the closer that I looked at it, the more I realized that the tree is actually upside down, or at least that's my interpretation of it. Um, it definitely appears more so in this larger version, which is lovely. I love this death card. Just, I think it's just beautiful. We have the, the chopped down tree. We have, you know, all of these dark, heavy clouds above, but yet all this greenery below. I just, I think it's beautiful. So here we have the temperance. We can definitely see all of the elements in movement, I think, in this card. You know, we have water, we have earth, we get the idea of wind with the kind of curly cues in the movement and we have fire in the sun. I love that idea of all of it coming together. Love this devil card with all of the um, chains around the tree and then we have like the, the crow, the raven there. Beautiful. Again, a gorgeous tower. This tower card always kind of makes me giggle when I see it because one of the kids... Um, said, not my kids, but one of one of my friend's kids, um, we were doing readings with this deck and she looked at it and she said, the tree looks like it's attacking the tower. And I thought, that's kind of funny. Like the tree is not the tower. The tree is the thing attacking the tower. And I just thought that was really interesting. Beautiful star card. I love the, the black um, knight there with the big star in the center. We have the three shooting stars, which is wonderful gorgeous beautiful moon card gorgeous sun I love the little sunflowers the big bright sun and we still have the tree which I think is really wonderful I'm gonna try not to go into too much detail or we'll be here forever because I really could sink into a lot of detail with these cards um, in part because I know them so well and I've worked with them a lot and also because I think there's just a lot symbolically to to dive into in this deck so here we have judgment and I love this judgment card because we have this sprout that's coming out here and it's, you know, becoming its next, next evolution. I just, I just think that's beautiful. Gorgeous world card with the tree wrapped around the world. Stunning, stunning. 
the Ace of Cups. I love that some of the branches are in the cups. I keep saying I love, but I do. I love this deck. Can you tell? I'm not biased at all. <laughs> we have the Two of Cups. Again, just that, that idea of union. So gorgeous. Beautiful Three of Cups. Gorgeous Four. I love how the water flows from cup to cup to cup, and then it's coming outward. I just oh, I think it's so beautiful. I think there's just a lot of symbolism in this deck that we don't maybe necessarily catch on first glance with it. But after reading um, with this deck a lot, working with it, it's it's really interesting. Beautiful Five of Cups. Um, you know, see here these branches, they're like broken off and we have the, instead of like sap, it looks kind of like the water, which for tying back into the idea of emotion, which I think looks really beautiful. Gorgeous Six of Cups. Love this seven with all the different trees in the cups. I just think that's really clever. Again, gorgeous Eight of Cups. I really love the, the stability that we see in this um, particular card. This deck does read really well numerologically as, as well, which I, I really do appreciate. Um, it's definitely based on the, you know, kind of a reimagining of the Waitsmith system, but it definitely can be read in a more numerological aspect, which I really do appreciate. Gorgeous Nine of Cups. Love this 10. See, very traditional type of artwork. You know, we can imagine the little family down there, but instead we have this gorgeous tree that's kind of sprouting these new leaves. I think that's just wonderful. Here we have the Page of Cups. The cup is being filled by the waterfall. The Knight. I love that this tree looks in motion, right? It's hard to make a tree look in motion. Um, we, but knights are, are about movement. They're about going out and, and doing your thing, going out and doing the quest. That could be really hard to depict with a tree because it's very rooted. It's very grounded in place. And I love this, um, the movement that we get in the knights through the kind of sway of the tree itself. I think that's really, really lovely. Beautiful queen of cups. We have our king of cups. Moving into our wands. We'll talk about the seasons in a minute because that is very predominant in this deck. Our two of wands. Love that with the big tall trees. Reminds me of where I live. Looks like the Pacific Northwest to me. Three of trees. Three of trees. Three of wands. Gorgeous four. I love this five of wands. We definitely get that sense of sort of conflict and disruption going on. Again, even though these are trees, they're very rooted into the earth, but we still get that idea of, of, of movement and conflict, which I really, really love. Beautiful six of wands. Seven. Love all the tall trees standing tall over the village. Eight of wands really just kind of close in on these branches here. Um, it, you know, it almost looks like the tree's growing sideways. It's growing outward instead of upward, which is really interesting. Nine of wands. A 10. I love the intersection here in these branches. And then we have the little, the new life blooming within. Gorgeous. Page of wands. Knight of Wands. So here we see another example of a knight that really looks like it's in motion. It looks like it's going somewhere. It almost looks like a figure with, you know, hands and feet and a little face. And it looks like it's very determined and moving forward. Um, this tree to me does look determined. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Love this Queen of Wands. It's just beautiful. The King of Wands. The little knots I think are wonderful. So here we have the ace, the two, the three of swords. This one's a little rough, right? Because we definitely get that idea of like the tree's being cut, the swords are all in the heart, and we've got like the blood gushing out. Gorgeous four. 
The Five of Swords, again, we definitely get that sense of conflict. I don't know that you necessarily re really even need the swords in these cards. Um, I think that the way that the artist has depicted all the trees in the sword suit could really um, take on the, the symbol of the, the, the swords themselves, but I really don't mind the swords in the cards. I just don't know that you necessarily need them. I think that she does such a wonderful job of of capturing the movement and energy of these cards within the trees themselves. I think with the swords being um, kind of front and center and they kind of draw the attention in the suit of swords, um, I think it's important to pay attention to the trees and what's going on with them. Um, there's a lot, I think, to be uncovered within what's going on in the trees themselves as well. Here we have the Eight of Swords. I mean, if you took the swords away, right, if you took the swords away and it was just this tree bound, or maybe if we had a tree with eight branches bound, I think you could still get the same idea. But again, I don't mind the swords at all. But I do think that um, the artist does a wonderful job of, of kind of creating a movement and energy through the trees themselves. Nine of swords, 10 of swords. This one is a little bit of a tough one. I mean, trees don't bleed. So it's like really metaphorical, right? But, uh, you know, they can be uprooted, they can be cut down, and that's that can be really, really devastating. Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords. Again, we see that movement, which is really wonderful. The Queen of Swords. I do quite like this one with the tree kind of um, wrapping itself around the swords. I think that's a wonderful depiction for the Queen of Swords. There's the King of Swords, a very like sword in the stone, you know, King Arthur coming to pull out the sword. I think that's really fun. So here we have the Pentacles. There's the Ace and our two. I love the way the Pentacles are depicted in this deck. Three of Pentacles. This one's very Pip-like too, which is really interesting. A couple of the um, cards in this deck really are very Pip-like. It's kind of like a, a pippy RWS because there's no people, there's there's not real scenes as we tend to think of scenes in a deck. Um, but the trees take the place of the people, so there are scenes depicted. But you could also kind of see it a little bit as, as a pip style deck too. Because in some cases we just have the symbols, the emblems are really what's front and foremost. But again, see here, if we pay attention to what's going on with the tree in the background, like it looks like devastated it looks sad it's drooping it's dark it's lost all of its leaves and then here we have our six of pentacles with the little squirrels taking all the pentacles away that one's so cute seven of pentacles love that i love this eight of pentacles i think did i just have that one on top look at this let's just look because i have it right here Look at the difference. Oh, you can see so much more detail. The colors are really, really similar. I think they're a little bit richer in the new edition than they are in this one. And that could be really just because of the different cardstock. Um, colors look a little different when you put that glossy overlay on top of them than when you have this like matte finish. Beautiful, beautiful. Love this nine of pentacles where the pentacles are all embedded in the roots and the earth. Oh, I just think that's beautiful. Gorgeous ten of pentacles. Again, this one kind of like reminds me of home. Looks like the Pacific Northwest. We have the page of pentacles. The knight of pentacles. Again, we get that sense of movement, which is really lovely. Our queen, she's protecting her little pentacle. I think that's gorgeous. One of my favorite cards in the deck. And finally, our king. Oh, and so this one does have a couple of extra cards. Um, we have the regeneration card, which I think is one that came in the edition that I have as well. And a new card, it looks like Roots. Beautiful. I don't tend to leave those ones in the deck, but those are pretty gorgeous cards. Love that. One of the things that I did want to do um, is to kind of show you 
how each suit goes through the seasons and because that's really one of my favorite things about this deck besides the fact that it, like it's all trees and landscapes and there's no people which totally makes me happy um and these cards are so large they barely fit in my space here um, but we have the suit of pentacles has all wintry scenes depicted and we saw that in you know all these purples and blues um, and the black trees I think the trees are all black and the pentacles are all um, yellow and you can see like the sky if I can try to fan them out you can see we've got that purpley blue sky across all of them with the black trees and always in the snow so we have very much winter represented here in the um, suit of pentacles we have spring represented so you can see here that we have the um, again if I can kind of fan them out that yellowy orange um, with hints of blue all throughout the skyline of this this particular suit and we have lots of flowers lots of things blooming around all the cups and of course we have you know quite a bit of water as well in terms of that blue color that we have throughout um, the suit so that is spring and then we have um summer is represented by the suit of wands and you can definitely see like that gorgeous um blue summer sky there there's lots of sun there's lots of um leaves and greenery lots of grass areas in this particular in this particular suit which is really wonderful and then we have finally fall you can see here that we have lots of the reds and oranges and yellows all those really um kind of hot colors um which i think is really interesting because i i personally kind of associate the um summertime with the with the hotter colors because you know it gets hot in the summer but I guess that depends on where you live I think I have those correct it has been a really long time since I've read all of the sort of introductory information on um, this particular deck we read these cards very um, numerologically and when I say we I mean me and like all the kids and friends and family um, because this is the deck that always like I've mentioned many times before this is actually the deck you know that always goes camping with us because this is the one everybody wants obvious changes between these two um editions of the deck the uh fourth edition the new fourth edition is much much larger um we have kind of these green decorative borders on here here we had black ones um we have a similar i think font for the titles and of course, we have totally different cardstock. This is um, matte and this is glossy. Um, this deck is also uh, matte, has matte gold gilding on it. Whereas the um, original one that I have here didn't have any gilding and I just, I never got around to edging it. Um, the backs are also quite different. I do really, really like the new back because it matches the Oracle, which I am gonna drag out here in just a second. But I'm really, really pleased with the size of it. Um, even though, again, I would have liked to have seen it um, borderless, I'm actually kind of not sad about it because I'm not, I'm just not a fan of gilding. This is actually really, really nice gilding. I'm not saying that it's not, but my intention with the, and the reason I bought this larger um, fourth edition, because I knew it was going to be bigger. I had no idea it was going to be this much bigger, but I knew it was going to be quite a bit bigger. And so the whole reason that I bought it was because I wanted to trim it down to the artwork only. And that's something that I've always wanted to do with this little one. And I have it for two reasons. Um, one, because then it would be like a teeny tiny little deck, right? If I took all the borders off. And two, like I said, the, the kids use this deck all the time. And if I took the titles off, they're not going to know what is what. So I wanted to leave that one as it was. And that one is going to be for them. And this one is going to be for me. So I am probably going to trim it down to this gorgeous artwork because that's something I've always wanted to do. And now I finally can. Now the question is with this behemoth of a deck, how are you going to shuffle it? I think that maybe I could corner shuffle. I mean, kind of. Sort of, yeah, nope, because it's matte, so it's not gonna really slide back together. So this is not going to be a, um, like I can't even get it back in there. So probably not going to be a riffle shuffle deck. Um, like, wow, I can barely get my hands around it to 
to do this either. So um, that might get, you know, a little bit better if I decide to go ahead and trim it and that might make it a little bit smaller, um, a little bit easier for me to handle. But I'm not like disappointed in this size. I'm really not because I so wanted to be able to see this rich detail in this imagery. I so wanted to be able to dive into these images and now I feel like I really can. So while I'm here and just sort of having a little play, I pulled out my, um, that's the box. I pulled out my um, Plant Spirit Oracle by Dana O'Driscoll, so by the same creator. And I just kind of wanted to just have a little bit of a play with the two of them. Um, I think that the cardstock is the same. I mean, it feels exactly the same other than the Plant Spirit Oracle is obviously borderless, which is the title at the bottom and the Tower of the Trees, um, you know, obviously has the border around it. But I think that, um, I think that these two decks will probably read really well together too. Quite beautiful. I, I really love her artwork. I really love the way that she depicts um, movement and uses color. I just think it's really beautiful. Ooh, Fire for the Emperor. That works quite well, doesn't it? I didn't really intend to do like a flip through, like a side by side flip through, but I kind of just, I'm here. So I thought we'd just do it. Hemlock for the five of wands. Interesting. So of course, obviously in the plant spirit, um, we do have, you know, more humanistic things. We have hands, we have um, a, a bigger, I, I don't suppose, I guess you could say variety of things. Um, it's not all just about the trees, but I do really like the tarot of trees being all just about the trees. So see here in this one, you can see there's a face in that tree. But yeah, it's just, I think they're beautiful. They do have the same, same artwork for sure. Um, let's look at the box together because that's really pretty. So let's see here, the um, Tower of the Trees, you know, is, is a touch bigger than the Plant Spirit. And actually I think like they're a little bit closer to the same size in terms of the artwork. Um, it's just a little bit wider on the Tower of the Trees and a little bit shorter in terms of the, the art space area. So yeah, I just wanted to have a little play with them. I was super excited about getting this deck. Um, I, I really love uh, her artwork. I really enjoy working with her decks. And like I said, the, the main reason that I wanted to get to this particular um, edition, the larger edition, for one, just being curious and wanting to see it, but really so that I can, you know, trim it down and just have these um, gorgeous works of art to use in my readings. Um, this deck, as I mentioned, will not change. It's going to stay the same because this is the one that the, the kids all love and it's the one that they always ask for. So I keep it for them and it's really kind of become their deck, um, their camping deck. It, it goes with us whenever we travel. <laughs> um, and so although we haven't been doing much of that lately, um, it's definitely one that will continue to travel with us when we go um, places with our family, with other families. And this one will now be just for me, which I'm really excited about. Um, definitely think I'm going to be trimming it. It'll make it a little bit smaller. Um, and like I said, although this gilding is actually, it's very nice gold gilding. This is no criticism of the gilding because even though I do not like shiny gilding, I don't really mind matte gilding but I really want to trim it um, just because I know these images so well, I don't really need them. I don't need the titles really is what I'm getting at. So I can take the titles off and seeing says it's just going to be just for me. Uh, it's going to be um, beautiful, I think, and I'm really excited to, to do that. So that is a look at the new fourth edition, 10th anniversary of the Tower of the Trees. And we did a little bit of a comparison to the previous editions, not a side-by-side -side comparison, but just talking about the different artwork and cardstock. And of course, we also took a look at it um, next to the Oracle by the same creator because that's just always fun to do. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.